Is Tybee Island easy to get to from Savannah? Can you swim year-round? Is it too expensive to buy a vacation home there? I'm going to answer all these questions and more because today I am unboxing Tybee Island. Tybee Island is in the easternmost part of Savannah. This is where our beaches are. It is directly south of Hilton Head, South Carolina, but it is significantly smaller than Hilton Head. You can see that if Hilton Head is the size of a tennis shoe, Tybee is the size of your big toe. What? I thought that was a good analogy. Look at the shape of Hilton Head. Tybee is your quintessential laid-back beach community. It's not ritzy, it's not fancy, it's totally chill. With tons of little restaurants and gift shops, t-shirt stores, and places to buy boogie boards, Tybee is a great place to spend the day. Some of my all-time favorite restaurants in all of the Savannah area are on Tybee Island, but more on that later. Yes, it is very easy to get to Tybee from downtown Savannah. In fact, if you're staying in one of the big hotels in the historic district, it'll probably take you a half hour or less to get to the beach in Savannah. However, if you're coming from the airport, it's going to be more like an hour. From the Savannah Hilton Head International Airport, which is in Pooler, Georgia, you have to go from the west side of Savannah all the way to the east side, going right smack dab through the middle of downtown. So even though it's less than 30 miles from the airport, plan on it taking about an hour, maybe longer, depending on the time of day. You can definitely grab an Uber, Lyft, or a taxi from the airport to get to a hotel on Tybee Island. What is there to do on Tybee Island? Aside from the obvious, there is Fort Pulaski for all of you nature and history buffs. Fort Pulaski was used during the Civil War and was declared a national monument in 1924. The nature trails here are absolutely stunning and there are several picnic spots available. And Fort Pulaski is dog friendly, so feel free to bring the pooches along as long as they're on a leash. The Tybee Island Lighthouse is an iconic landmark of the area and is the oldest and tallest lighthouse in Georgia, which probably isn't really anything to brag about since very little of Georgia is on the ocean and therefore not that many areas even have a lighthouse in the first place. But just saying. You can climb up all 178 steps to the very top and get some truly amazing photos and video of the entire island. There's a marine science center and art galleries and even a little theater. You can rent a jet ski or learn to surf. You can learn to paddleboard. You can look for seashells. You can even go out on a boat and look for dolphins. One of my personal favorite things to do. It may be a small island, but there is plenty to do here. Now, let's talk beaches. Can you swim here year-round? No, you really can't. In the wintertime, the water temperature is about 59, 60 degrees. It's pretty darn cold. At the height of summer, it can get all the way up to 85, which is not even refreshing. It's like sitting in a hot bathtub on a hot summer day. It's not really all that enjoyable. But people do it anyway because they want to go to the beach when it's beautiful outside. But in the wintertime, if you're brave enough to go in the water, you're definitely going to need a wetsuit. I remember one year my husband and I went to the beach on New Year's Eve to watch fireworks. They were setting fireworks out over the water. I have never been so cold in my life. Something about being in the dark when it's windy right on the ocean is just bone chillingly cold. The locals who are slightly crazy to do the polar plunge on January 1st. On New Year's Day, they go to the beach, they dress up in crazy costumes, they run into the water, and usually they turn around and run right back out again, and then wish that they had never had this idea in the first place. But hey, at least they can say they did it, which is more than I can say. How many beaches are there at Tybee Island? Well, there are a few, but before we get to that, I need to go over the beach rules with you. Always obey lifeguards. Always swim within 50 yards of shore. No kegs on beach. No littering. No motorized watercraft within 1,000 feet of the beach. No sleeping or camping overnight. No fireworks. Stay off the dunes. No nudity on beach. No pets on beach except service dogs. No glass on the beach. No fires on beach. Surfing and fishing in designated areas only. No shark fishing. Do not walk or swim to the sandbar on the south end of the island. No jumping from the pier. No motorized vehicles on beach. No tents, umbrellas, or chairs on the beach from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. The Tybee Island Pier at South Beach is probably the most recognizable landmark next to the lighthouse on the island. The pier jets from the pavilion way out into the water where people can go fishing or just sit and watch the waves rolling in. 
The attached pavilion has public restrooms and a couple of refreshment stands, but mostly it's just a place to get out of the sun. That relentless sun beating down on you in the heat of summer can be brutal, and sometimes you just need a little shade. South Beach is where all the tourists go, and this is where it's going to be the busiest, but it also has the most available parking and plenty of restaurants that are right off of the beach, so it's easy to get there and grab some lunch or a drink. North Beach is the first beach area you come to once you go over the bridge and land on Tybee Island. This is also where the RV campground is. So if you plan to stay in your camper, the River's End Campground and RV Park is for you. There's also a dog park in North Beach. There are plenty of restaurants and shopping, but they're not quite as close to the water as they are in the South Beach area. North Beach is excellent for taking nature trails, bird watching, fishing, taking surfing lessons, and it's very quiet and low key. So it's pretty much the exact opposite of South Beach. Then we have Mid Beach, which is exactly like what it sounds like. It is midway between North Beach and South Beach. It's in the middle of the island, and it has an extensive stretch of sand, but it's not quite as close to parking and shopping and restaurants, and it's a good distance away from the pier and the pavilion. The Back River is a favorite among locals. It's hidden away, the waves are very gentle, and you get to see a lot of dolphins. If you don't like crowds and want to get away and enjoy nature, just grab a kayak, start paddling, and it's not uncommon to have dolphins swimming along right next to you. AJ's Dockside Restaurant is on the back river, and they have amazing she-crab stew. The Crab Shack is the most kitschy place I've ever been to in my whole life, and I gotta tell you, I absolutely love it. Their motto is, where the elite eat in their bare feet. You can eat your weight in low country boil and see baby alligators in the lagoon. The Crab Shack is one of the very first restaurants that you will encounter as you're leaving Savannah and you come to the island. Now, if shrimp and grits is more your thing, then I did a video all about my favorite places to get shrimp and grits, and one of them is right on South Beach, so you should watch that one next if you're a shrimp and grits fan. Now, let's say you come to Tybee Island and you love it so much that you want to move here. You want to buy a second home here. Are you going to be able to afford it, and how much is it going to cost you? Lucky for you, I am a licensed realtor and my team, the GCH team with Real Broker, specializes in helping people who are relocating to the area. So let's jump into the MLS and do a quick search and see what stuff costs. I am recording this in December of 2021 and I'm going to do a search for the last 90 days. I'm going to look for condos that are on Tybee Island and let's see what these things sold for. So there were seven that sold. The least expensive one was $219,000, the list price. It is essentially a hotel room. It is a single room with the combined living room and sleeping area with the bathroom at the back. It really is just like a hotel room, very entry level, but it sold for only $209,000 and it's only a block or so to the ocean. Then there's this one on Butler Avenue that I think was absolutely adorable. Two bedroom, two bath that sold just under a thousand square feet and it sold for $385,000. I think it is absolutely adorable. Very beachy inside, good condition, nicely updated kitchen. That all looks great. This one was actually being used as a short-term vacation rental. So this really is the best way to buy a second home, in my opinion. If you're only going to be using it a few months of the year, you can rent it out when you're not using it. This way, not only does the income offset the mortgage payment, it actually becomes profitable for you. It becomes a money-making venture. So when you're not using it yourself, it's bringing in revenue, and then you have a free place to stay on vacation a couple times a year. The most expensive condo sold for $615,000. It was a three-bedroom, two-bath, and it is oceanfront. They call it Dolphin Watch for a reason, because this is your view from your balcony. Not too shabby. Now let's go back and see what houses cost. Those were condos. Let's see what we can get for a freestanding house. There were a couple of houses that sold for less than 400,000, but they were fixers. They needed a little bit of work. 
then we see that there were a lot of houses that sold between 500 and just under a million. And while that's still a fair amount of money, to get a house that's a beach house this close to the ocean and be able to spend six, seven, eight hundred thousand for it is actually not all that crazy, is it? Here is a three bed, two bath that sold for 500,000 and it's very updated and lovely inside. But look at this awesome deck where you can sit outside and have amazing views. Here's a cute three bedroom, two bath, just under 1400 square feet that sold for 525,000. This to me just screams Tybee. The bright colors, the very casual atmosphere, this kind of rustic outdoor area where they are using all of the available outdoor space and a nicely updated interior. So to get a beach house for 525, not so bad. And if you have a whopping 4.2 million to spend, this is what you can get. Look at the location of this house. Oh boy, I tell you, if I had a house like this, the inside is stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous, but I don't think I would do anything except sit and look out the window, sit on the deck, listen to the sound of the waves crashing, the smell of the salt air, listening to the seagulls. Hashtag house goals. If city living is more your style, then check out Unboxing Savannah. We talk about ghosts, alligators, hurricanes, all the things. So watch Unboxing Savannah right up next.